Cool, so that's my cheesy video from two years ago, <laughs> but it works. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. My name is Spencer Burke. I'm from Orange County, California. I grew up in La Jolla, in San Diego, grew up in PV. Um, as you guys just saw, majority of the content that I have online is based around cars. So you may see pictures of my BMW or cars that I see around town. I've been heavily involved with car dealerships for like maybe 10 years or so. Um, to give you guys a foundation, the main idea that I want to have today is I want to bring you guys value. So I could talk about myself all day long, but I don't need to in this situation. Um, I'll give you guys a foundation of kind of where I started, how my journey began, and then I want to have you guys ask me questions because if you guys have questions about business, about social media, lifestyle, I'm very transparent with how I answer, so there's no question I'm afraid to answer. Um, back in 2004, I was in Michigan, where I'm from, and I had a pretty crazy childhood. My dad passed away when I was 14. I moved to San Diego with my mom, and she had a really hard time when I was growing up. My father passed away, her husband, for 30 years, moved to San Diego. We were homeless. So we lived in Pacific Beach, no home, no idea what to do. So one of the things that I had done is, you can see more car stuff. Um, in San Diego, you guys may know, in La Jolla, there's a car dealership called O'Gara Coach. It was known as Symbolic Motors, Lamborghini, Bugatti, Rolls-Royce, Bentley. I used to go there maybe 10 times a month, maybe 15, and I would just go in, hang out, meet people, get to know the dealership industry. From 14 to 18, I went there every weekend, didn't care if it was by myself, my family, my friends, and I begged for a job. I was like, I want to work here. I'm going to find a way to work at this dealership. So. To understand where this is going, when I was 14, I was given a camera as a gift. And I started taking photos of cars everywhere. It was like my passion. So I'd go to all these dealerships, specifically the one in La Jolla. When I turned 18, they offered me a job as a receptionist. I took it as fast as I could, dropped out of school, full-time receptionist, 18 years old. My mom was a professor for 20 years at University of Michigan. And her son dropping out of high school, she was like, what the fuck are you doing? didn't understand it. But throughout that time, I built a really big name for myself through using social media and sharing my life online. Started with Zanga, MySpace, Blogger, all the main platforms. Instagram came out, Facebook. I used all those platforms to, I guess, advertise my passion. Um, after my dad died and being homeless, I didn't know what to do. I had to find something that could like cure me, make me feel better. So taking photos, going to dealerships, that made me happy. What happened after that? So got a job as a receptionist, 18. From 18 to 25, I worked at all these dealerships doing photography. Instagram came out. Facebook was booming. I used all these platforms to kind of push my name out there as far as what I did. I love photography. I love cars. I have platforms to share it. As I got older, um, when I was 25, I walked into work one day. And I realized that I was building somebody else's dream. I was like, what am I doing? I want to build something for myself, something for me that can be handed down to my family, my friends, my whoever it could be. I wanted to build something that was mine. So using the same techniques I had used for one dealership, I was thinking to myself, well, if I'm making five to $6,000 a month doing social media, doing photography, selling cars, what if I did five to $6,000 a month for 100 dealerships? Make 600 grand a month, make 6 million a month. I want to make more than what I was doing to feed the passion I had the car lifestyle, having fun, most of all having the freedom. So one day I walked into work and I was like, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. And I saved up enough money, I jumped ship, and what I had done is I started a marketing company. So as being clever as I could, I just named it my last name, Marketing. And it's a social media agency now where we help people with online marketing. So I share my life as a social media agency where we help companies with social media. I document my life on camera, which I've been doing for four years now. I share everything. So I moved into a new office about a month ago. Um, I just taught social media in LA at Palos Verdes, uh, buying my dream car, sharing more stuff about what I do. And this has brought me so much freedom where I work with companies now like Michelin, Honda, Dyson Vacuums, 
um, these big companies that sponsor me to post on my Instagram and YouTube. So in a nutshell, to give you guys an idea, um, I started as a photographer. I realized that the marketing game was much bigger. I stepped into marketing. Um, throughout all the people that I sold cars to or I worked with in the industry, all those people needed help with social media. So I charged them per month to do social media and eventually had enough money coming in that I could leave. Now I have two full-time employees. I have an office in Laguna Beach and we're trying to expand to Orlando. That's the next goal. So overall with this social media thing, like I said, I could talk about everything that I do and how I do it, how to get more followers, how to get more brand deals, whatever it could be. But my main goal for you guys is that I want you to feel excited enough and, and comfortable enough to ask me anything, whether it's about money, about lifestyle, about mindset. Um, and I just think that bringing you guys value will help you retain something. So I think, I don't know if you have any questions or if you have any ideas, but one thing I like to do is bounce back and forth. So if you guys have any questions about what I do, about social media, I'm all ears 100%. Okay, I got a question. Um, so when you, do you pitch businesses or do more businesses pitch you? I think with the following that I have, most businesses come to me, but I have had to pitch a couple companies where, like I wanted to work with a big dealership. It was the number one dealership for that brand in the world. And I pitched them and we got it. But when it comes down to people reaching out to me, it's, you know, I have a couple million between Instagram and Facebook and everyone has a business, whether it's a startup or, you know, a Fortune 500 company. So a lot of people come to me. Sure. Pitch it to other companies yeah, so one of the things that we look at is, you know, I could have someone come to me and I could get their Instagram, I could do their social media, and I could go buy a million followers. And they go, oh my God, I have a million followers now. But the reality is, is that, you know, if you have a million people following you and not one person converts to buying something from you, whether it's a service or a product, what's the point of it? It's all ego. So a lot of companies I talk to, the thing is that me being a pioneer in social media, it's so new on how you track everything. So we always just usually generate something where, like let's say they're like an energy drink company and you can buy their product online. What I would do is I would say, you know, use a code on your website, Instagram 10% off, and they can enter that and it can track the records from Instagram, from Facebook, from YouTube. So you can generate leads through social media and you can track them with discount codes. Other than that, it's so new that it's really hard to like justify how how many leads come through social media? Yeah. Well, Spencer, first thing, thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate it. Um, the question I had was, what are the few tips you recommend as far as growing organically? Uh, like you said, um, you can buy followers, but if you're not purchasing product, you're just kind of wasting your money. So yeah. What are a few takeaways you recommend as far as if you do have a brand, whether it's automotive or fitness or mm -hmm. a product, what do you recommend as far as growing organically? One thing I've always looked at is, with all my social media, I've never bought followers. I've never bought anything fake. I've always been very genuine, and I've been very active with social media. So a lot of people, when they come to me, they want the overnight success. And for me, my Instagram, I started the month Instagram came out. And I've built my community around those people. Even though I have you know, 161,000, whatever it could be, to me, the number doesn't really matter. It's about the people that come out of that. So. To build something for yourself organically, you have to be very active with social media. I respond to all my comments, all my DMs, all my messages, I get back to everybody, and I also use the explore page. So if you're trying to get like, let's say fitness, you search hashtag fitness, make it a goal that you comment on 100 pictures a day. Hey, nice picture, hey, I like this, hey, what kind of shoes do you have, whatever it could be. So you're interacting with these people that genuinely are getting back to you, and then they'll follow you. Because they see you're interested. Would you say that really helped accelerate your growth was that interaction um, or more uh, like collaboration? So say you have somebody in Miami that has you know, a million or two million followers and we do like a group collaboration. Mm -hmm. Do you think that also helps to add to the organic growth as well? Oh yeah, extremely. I mean with my YouTube videos, I've done collaborations with other companies and other people. And when you're, you appear in other people's videos, you can pull their audience too. So you got to make sure you're doing the collaborations because you want to, not because you want the followers. Right. And I'm guilty of that. I've done 
partnerships with people I just want money from or, or whatever. And I realized that wasn't who I was. So I don't do collaborations as often, but they can definitely help you if you do it the right way. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, in the back. Yeah, I'm a social media influencer as well. Okay. Oh, cool. And uh, my niche is different. It's uh, politics, commentary politics. Sure. And uh, I've been having a hard time trying to monetize it. I mean, YouTube pays, but the paycheck from YouTube is not my goal. Sure. I wanted to, I don't know, like, do something about it. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I had an Instagram account, but I ended up uh, disabling it. Okay. And I reached uh, 40,000 followers. Gotcha. But I'm going to get back into it. How was your engagement? Were a lot of people commenting and liking and everything? Yeah, uh, crazy. Okay. Yeah. This is why I had to deactivate. I, I'm busy yeah. with many other stuff and sure. I just couldn't keep up with it and keep track. So I had, I couldn't, I couldn't continue. So what's your goal? Let, let's say you have those 40,000 people. What do you want to do with them? You want to, monet, you want to monetize that? I, I mean, yeah, I wanted to monetize it. Okay. Monetize my presence in social media. But, uh -huh. uh, yeah, I mean, I'm having a hard time trying to. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. The first thing that I would recommend is that um, with politics, it's a little bit harder because big companies and brands are scared to jump into politics with how much stuff can happen with it. But I'm sure that there's people in the politic world that would want to sponsor your videos. So if you, if you had a YouTube video and you go, hey, what's up, guys? Here's um, a presentation from a company sponsoring this video. Thank you for sponsoring it. You show, like, I've done, they'll send me, put it in my video for the first 20 seconds. They pay me a, whatever it could be. So you can do that based around the politic world. I personally don't know. I don't know if you could do like a shoe brand or a clothing brand or a hat or something for a company, yeah. but that's one way you can do it. Um, the second way is obviously your AdSense off YouTube. So if you're filming videos and you're getting views on your videos and you're making money from that. The third way is your own brand. So make your own t-shirts, make your own hats, make your own stickers, keychains, whatever it could be, and then you plug that in your videos. Okay. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, of course. Like knowing that there's a lot of people wanting to get into marketing, how exactly were you able to differ to differentiate yourself from the rest of your competitors? And like, <clears throat> you have a special know-how in this business, or what was it that helped you gain so much success? Um, I shared my life. I didn't. When I started the marketing company, like, I talk about real stuff. Like, my dad passed away, being homeless, talking about hardships, money issues, whatever it could be. I was the one who put myself out there. You don't have to put yourself out there all the way, but I would share the ups and the downs and showing a picture of like my desk, my first office, my first employee, sharing how I got to that point and sharing what I have planned next. Because most companies that, anyone in the world, they want to share one thing. You know, if you're in the car industry, you're just sharing cars. If you're in the fitness industry, you're just you working out. When you start sharing more genuine content, more people can relate to you. I can't relate to some dude who has a six pack, I, that's not me. But if some dude shares his life on a perspective of like, he's trying to start his own brand and build a company, I can relate to that because I'm business oriented. So that, even if I'm not into those genres, I could relate on a human level. Yeah. Could you, um, yeah, first off, thanks for everything. Yeah. That's great. Uh, can you kind of walk us through your evolution into a creative media and now Mm -hmm. at a young age, 14. Yeah, I was 14. Mm -hmm. um, so what, how did you take upon yourself to you know, obtain mastery in that, apply it to an industry that you were passionate in? You know, like, were you doing online courses? Did you mm -hmm. mentors? So, I'd love to hear that. Yeah, so what I, I was all self-taught. I've never, I don't have any college or high school degree. I didn't learn anything from anywhere else besides YouTube. I would search YouTube, how to tie a tie, how to tie my, like, whatever it could be, I would search how to, map, how to create a MySpace profile, how to learn HTML. And for, got to the point where I was just searching like, you know, how to do better Instagram marketing, how to do better photography. Uh, and not just that, but I was surrounding myself with people who did the same thing. So I would go to car shows where there's 10 other photographers and we'd all meet up and we'd talk and then practice together. And I would do that every Saturday. So throughout my high school years, I wouldn't go out and party Friday night. I go to bed early, wake up at five and go to a car show at six and then practice all morning. So I put in hours on hours of learning that and it built this skill set that I monetize off of. I was just fortunate enough to understand the market. I have a skill set, I can sell this. And I built off that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it, it sounds like kind of like whatever you needed to learn at that moment, you would search it in YouTube. Yeah. Now at the agency level, um, how do you kind of position your, your 
mastery and then quantify ROI when people hire you mm -hmm. for social media? So when I had, when I built my personal social media, all I had to do was take those same techniques and apply it to a business. So I was sharing my life as a photographer, as a car salesman, as a vlogger, whatever it was. If this business came to me and they sold cars, I knew that they were a dealership, they had leasing programs, they had financing programs, they had car events. They, they had all these different variants of things that I could use to market. So I just figured out if I'm gonna use Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, two things, how do I come up with the content and how do I share that? So I would just figure out what's the same thing I did for myself, that same technique, and apply that to a business. And at first it was only cars. Now I do any industry. I do restaurants, real estate agents, everything. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like the, the credibility from your own personal footprint <coughs> is carrying Yeah. I mean, I have people from, people from five years ago, even 10 years ago, like, hey, I have a company. My dad owns it. I own it. I need help with social media. And we get two leads a day now. Somewhere around there. So it's pretty busy. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. How do you maintain passion and motivation throughout all of this? I have no other choice. I don't have a lot of family. I don't have a lot of friends. I can choose to be sad and mad and upset, or I can choose to be super happy. And it's just my choice. And I think a lot of people don't realize that we have a choice. You know, so what if something happened in your life that sucks, but are you going to be sad and be mad? No, grow from it and become a better person. Yeah. We're on IG Live right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> He's got a plug. Got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, from Sean Hamilton. Yeah. Um, he said to ask Spencer about his high school t-shirt company he had with his friends of Ahoya High, and whether it was your first or second project as an entrepreneur. So I started a, a clothing company called Devoted Society, and actually I went to school with Sean. And basically what it was is uh, a company around what I believed in, the happiness, the positivity being able to dig yourself out of bad situations. And I started that company and uh, you know, I would sell shirts a month. It was a big company, it was fun. And that was what really launched me into the business world is learning how to use Shopify, learning e-commerce, learning social media marketing, um, selling these products. Like I was telling you, you, you can make a product, brand it around yourself, and because people believe in this positive, happy lifestyle, they're gonna support it. You're gonna make money from it. You know? That's not the actual end goal, but money supports your freedom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shipping through Shopify? Or what? I, I had a fulfillment company. You what, sorry? I didn't do any of the fulfillment. Oh, okay. I would hire someone to do that for me. Yeah. Yeah. I did for a little bit. My whole kitchen was all shelving. <laughs> I had all my shirts in my, I got rid of my dining room table and just put shelves all over the wall. And then I would just literally dig through it and pull a shirt and then ship it out. And but where were they made? Uh, I had everything because I was in San Diego, so it took no time to get here. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No. I mean, you got to look at it this way. Like, I follow a couple fitness guys, Christian Guzman. I sold him a Lambo maybe four or five years ago, and he built a company. Like, if you look at right now, every market is saturated. Everyone wants to be a real estate agent. Everyone wants to be a social media influencer. And then you look at these random people like Logan Paul and Jake Paul pop up out of nowhere, and they just destroy YouTube by having all these views, all these people selling their merch, and then all these random people pop up. So. I don't think it's ever too saturated. You just have to find a way to stand out. Yeah. Sure. Um, what do you think was the biggest failure that you can remember throughout your journey, and what did you learn from it? Man, that's a that's a good one. Um, I think having an ego. When I was like 19, I was driving Bugattis and Lambos, thinking I was the shit, and I was driving on the Hoya, and I had this big ego. And then when I quit, I thought I had all this energy and I could do it and I ended up maxing out my credit cards and not having any money. And it really kicked me in the face. I was like, damn, I thought I could do it. You know? And that's what taught me how to dig back up from being on this high horse, making all this money, driving these cars, doing these things, and the next thing you know, you have nothing. So that, I don't think it was a failure, it was more of a lesson to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess we're all students here. We've got some grad students. How many of you guys are grad students, by the way? Okay, so we've got three grad students, everyone else is undergrad. And, um, and then we've got this entrepreneurship club. And so a lot of the people that come in here are coming in here because they want to learn how to either develop their business or start the business idea. So what would you recommend? Clearly, we're, we've chosen a different path than the one you took. You never mm -hmm. even went to school. But what would you recommend to say for myself? I'm a senior. I'm graduating in, in May. 
um, have a business idea, like how do you walk people through that? Like they just have an idea, they haven't even started a business. Um, what would you recommend? <laughs> I would say just try. That's the biggest thing is like go in 100%. I was on a podcast a few weeks ago and this guy asked me, he said, you know, how did you get to that point where you could go into work and leave? Like what, what was the mindset? And I was like 0.01% of belief in myself. It took just that only little bit to realize I have potential to do what I want. Whether it was an idea or a business or a new job, I wanted to be someone who had their own empire, built something from nothing. So. I think the best thing you can do is just try. I mean, fear is your friend. Let it be your best fucking friend. I'm telling you, excuse my language, but it gets me pumped up because so many people get scared of not having money, not having fame, not having friends, not having whatever it could be. Forget all that. Focus on yourself. Be happy for yourself and things will come back to you. So when I quit the dream job, I had 100,000 people on YouTube saying that you suck, you're stupid, why'd you quit the job? That's such a dream job. And two years, I spent people hating me. Literally, comments, DMs, talking about how fat I am, how old I look, all this stupid shit that was just so irrelevant. And I get it every day, I still do. But half of those people came back to me and apologized. They're like, oh shit, now I understand, I get it. Because I posted this picture on my Instagram, and it was kind of like the biggest middle finger in the most success way I could say it, this picture. <laughs> and my name's on the building, I'm smiling like I don't care about anything. And that was a picture that made people realize, like, I get it now, I understand. So I didn't listen to anyone. I didn't listen to my mom. I didn't listen to my friends or people that made fun of me, whatever it could be. I knew that I had an idea. And all it took was just trying. You know, this started out of my bedroom. This was just a fun idea. I mean, that's a picture from last week. I'll show you a picture of my office when I first started. That was my office when I started. That was just me at my house with a mentor of mine, Gary Vee, and my company. I had five iPads here. I had 20 different companies I was managing, and went from that to, we have, I think, over where we just do social media. So to go back to the point of it, you know, don't be afraid to try something different. Who cares what people say? You're going to learn from it, whether it's good or bad, and just apply those things you learn to your next idea. Yeah? For example, if I'm at a restaurant and I come to you and I say, I want to be, I want to have marketing, like, what do you offer? What's <coughs> So, because uh, Matt was mentioning, like, how do you measure the value that that you give to a company? And you made me understand that it's very hard to measure the value that you give to them. Sure. So, if you're a restaurant, I had my friend Ryan come to me, and he owns a place called Don Carlos in La Jolla. It's right on the beach. It's a really nice area. And he said that he wanted to have more customers come in. He wanted to have more presence on social media. Food is a huge industry on Instagram and Facebook. So what I do is, based on how much budget they have, we do a couple different things. The first thing we do, we do a management service. So every day, six days a week, we, we physically have your Instagram logged in at our office, and we post for you six days a week, Monday through Saturday, sometimes Sunday. Second part of it, we do content creation. So as I was a photographer for those eight to 10 years, I built a database of about 600,000 photographers that followed me. So I had photographers all over the world. So what I do now is I post on my Instagram, say, hey, I need a photographer in La Jolla for tomorrow. I'll get 10 DMs, I'll hire somebody, they go here, they take all these photos for me, put them in a Dropbox folder, and then we manage all that content. So that's where we get the content from. I pay, go take photos for me, throw them in Dropbox, and then I'll charge this client whatever it is. Wow. And that's how I profit. But I do that 100 times a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm continually doing that that's over and over and over again. Model. It's simple. Well, well, that seems like a, a do it yourself kind of thing to me. You know, like why would they hire someone to, to lazy? Or? Yeah, that's a reality. I mean, you've got to think if you're a business owner, you're not trying to focus on posting pictures on Instagram. You're trying to build a business. You're trying to handle the finances, your family, your, your workers. Like, I have my Instagram. I'm running a business. So when you look at it that way, a lot of people don't have time. Not just that, but you look at geotags, hashtags, comments, all the interaction, the explore page. We manage all that, and we help you get more business. A business owner can't do that every day of the week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you do like a monthly fee, So I do, I charge by month, um, and I do no contracts. So you're not locked in for it. You can do month to month. And that's what's made everyone say yes, because they don't feel locked in. Um, 
I charge a flat rate of whatever for management. I charge more to have a photographer come by. And then we set a budget if you want to do advertising, which is like boosted promotion posts like that. So it depends on the client. So what I do for this, this restaurant is I can't do global marketing for a restaurant in La Jolla. That wouldn't make any sense. They don't ship burritos to whatever, you know. So when it comes down to a company like this, we'll, we'll go in, bless you, and we'll find local hashtags of La Jolla, Pacific Beach, Claremont, whatever it could be, and we'll interact with people. So my team in-house will spend 30 to 40 minutes a day on each account going into the hashtags. They'll go find some guy and a girl that are in town from Colorado that posted 43 minutes ago, and I'll have them comment saying, hey, if you come to eat a burrito, we'll give you 10% off right now. And it works every time. Yep. So we interact with anyone that's local. Hey, come by for food sometime. Hey, let us know if you're in the area. Hey, if you're ever hungry on your lunch break, stop by. We do it by geotags, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you deliberately write out your, your strategy, your tactics that you're using? Nothing, I had no Only business plan, nothing. No, all I did was the last few months of working at a nine to five, I DM'd uh, 100 people a day. So at the end of the week, I knew I had 700 people that knew who I was. If I did that every day for a couple months, all I needed was four or five people at a month to say yes, and I could leave. So when I had two or three say yes, I bounced out and I was good. And then I lost two more. And then I gained five. And then I lost two. And then I lost I got seven. So it's never an easy battle, but definitely like I put in eight to twelve hours a day on my phone every day. Eight to ten hours active, not just look like actually going through Instagram. And that's how I built the business. I'm not lazy. I put the work in. And that's what so many people don't understand. I actually put the work in. I guess that's yeah, so what I did is after a couple mom and pop shops said yes, I get bigger companies that they actually want a strategy. They don't just want some kid coming in doing social media. So what I had done is I wrote out a contract that said this is month to month. You legally give Spencer Brook Marketing permission to post on your social media. Here's what we're going to provide. So it would be six to seven posts per week, uh, incentives if somebody comes in. If you have a discount code, let us know. I'm in communication with all my clients every week. Um, if it's like... One of my busiest times is Black Friday. Everyone has a deal, everybody. So I was dealing with that last week for like nonstop, but I wrote out everything and eventually got like structure behind it. So this, this morning, I'll take this off camera. This morning. Do you do Snapchat content as well? Yeah, not for clients. Snapchat's kind of irrelevant right now. <laughs> Instagram copied and they're doing better, so <laughs> yeah, sure. Do you think starting a business nowadays, it's essential to have social media? Because I personally, if you don't have social media, yeah. If you, if you don't have those platforms, you're irrelevant, completely irrelevant. And I say that in the nicest way possible because you got to look at this. When radio came out, all the attention. TV came out, all the attention. Social media, all the attention. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter what format it's in. It's attention. That's what we're trying to fight for. So if you have a business or a product, you want to be in front of the attention. Social media is where it's at right now. So I'm selective with who I work with. I'm very confident in saying I don't know something. I don't know anything about life insurance, but I can learn, I can figure it out as I go. And if a client comes to me, like let's say there's a company that's a brick and mortar from the 1940s, and let's say the generations took it over and over again, now they have someone who's running it that wants to do social media. If they didn't do social media now, give it 20 to 30 years until they go out of business, completely. Because it's all the attention. They use radio, they use TV, social media. So you gotta look at it that way where you got to fight for the attention where it is currently, and if you don't catch up and adapt, you're going to get left behind. And I've seen plenty of companies do that. Plenty of companies who don't use social media because their grandpa's owner says radio is better or a billboard is better. I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> Forget about that. Where's the attention at? So I definitely see social media benefiting you and anybody in growing a business or your personal brand, whatever it could be. Oh, all the time. Yeah, I mean, I did daily vlogs for, I think, 100 days in a row or something like that. Every day, I did a video. And every video takes about an hour and a half of footage, broken down into eight minutes, takes me six hours to edit it. So half my day is editing, half my day is filming. So when you look at the content, the, the thing you have to look at is how, how can you be inspired by other people's creativity? You don't have to copy people's stuff, but like you look at like the hot chip challenge where all the YouTubers did a hot chip or habanero, whatever it could be. And then you look at like the mannequin challenge, everybody did that. So there's all these trends you can follow and make your own version of it or spin off. And then 
you can be inspired by what other people are doing and have your own spin-off version of that. If you can't come up with anything, thankfully I'm creative enough to come up with a lot of stuff over and over again because I went from photography to lifestyle to business and business is a never-ending course. <laughs> so when it comes down to like creativity, I, you just have to either have it or you don't and you can learn more as you go. Um, I don't. Bo yeah, so there's certain incentives. I, I don't waste time. I'm not a bullshitter. I know how to close deals and I know how to make myself affirmative and confident. Uh, four years ago, I could never stand in front of people. I could never do it. But as I went through being a business owner, I had to shake 500 hands to get one person to say yes. So I learned as I went. But as far as pitching people and getting them to close, choosing me over somebody else, I just look at human connection. I just look at making a friend. I don't look at taking their money so I can go buy cars and whatever. I look at it like I'm here to help you and give you value. So I think when you connect with somebody on a personal level where you can actually you know, vibe with them, then I think you're more bound to close a deal like that. How did you decide not to, not to get into high school or any? Um, when my dad passed away, I couldn't focus on school. So from freshman to senior year, I had freshman credits. I never had any credits above a freshman. So I knew I'd spend another couple years in high school trying to get out, get a degree. And one day when I saw, I think it was I had my picture on the front of a magazine. I walked into like a Barnes and Noble and I saw a picture photo by Spencer Burke and I was like, okay, this could work. <laughs> so I realized from that point on that if I applied my hard work every day, not party, not drink, I had my time, but at the point where it was smart enough to put in the hours and the time that would come back to me, I knew that it would pay off. So when I hire people, I never look at resumes, I never look at education, I look at how you treat me. How you look at me, eye contact, firm handshake, that kind of thing, because that tells me more about who you are rather than what you studied. So when degrees come into play, it's great for certain things that you're doing. But for what I look at, it's a whole different ballgame now. I have a great friendship with my mom. She's my best friend. So I talk to her every day. She motivates me, she helps me with what I do. Um, she's like my rock, so she's always there to support me. And I'm in a position now where like, I can pay for all her stuff and it makes me feel great for doing that. And I just realized, like, I'm 26, I'll be 27 next month, and from, like, eight to, well, from 20 to 25, I learned a lot about what I wanted. I had a girlfriend, I had the car, I had everything I wanted, and I kind of got rid of all that because it wasn't really adding the happiness I wanted. I wanted to buy my mom a house. I wanted to buy myself my dream car. I wanted to have the freedom to go. I mean, today's what, Thursday and it's noon? I couldn't do this if I had a nine to five. Yeah. Now that I run my own company, I can do whatever I want. So when I was 25, when I left that job, um, the main thing I did is I said, what am I gonna do for five years? We're gonna do for five years, from 25 to 30, what can, I, what can I build? So I wanted to say for my 30th birthday, what do I wanna say to myself? What do I want? And I wanna say I built an empire multi-million dollar empire of a marketing agency. So I look at the longevity of it. I know when I'm 30 to 40, my life is going to be sick. I can't wait for that moment. I don't want to be so happy with that because I'm happy right now. I'm the happiest I've ever been hands down, but I still have a long way to go. So I look at the long-term picture and that's what motivates me. Yeah. Um, we work with a lot of smaller shops right now because it's easier. Um, for us as far as the workload because bigger companies want more hands-on and I don't have a team to go spend four hours a day on one project. To give you an idea, we spend about on each client. So we're not at the level to handle $10,000 to $20,000 a month clients, but we're starting to get into that. We're getting clients that are big, 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 big time and I sell them my price and they're like, okay, we can do that. And I'm like, holy crap, that's a lot of money. So. Building from what I know now, I'm waiting to feel confident enough to hire two more people, pay them, and go charge X amount to a huge company and grow into that. So I see the, I see the uh, opportunity. I just have to confidently get there with what I'm doing now. Awesome. Mm. Thanks. Yeah. I see you follow uh, Gary V. You know, he puts out a lot of good content. Um, and he kind of does you know, a lot of marketing also. So a question for you I have is, would you rather have 100 million followers <laughs> or $100 million? <laughs> 100 million followers for sure. Genuine people, real people. Because I could generate 100 billion if I had those people. Yeah, hands down. Because I see the longevity. Like I always tell people, I'm like, I never want to win the lottery. That's cheating. I don't want to win the lottery. It's not fun. Everyone's like, oh, I take the money and buy that. I'm like, no, no, no. There's, there's no other feeling like the first check I got that said Spencer Burke Marketing, I was like, dude, this is it. Like I was so happy with that. So when you look at 
the money factor, it's not really so big. It's a freedom. You have to do whatever you want. So I, I fight for that a lot more. Mm. The employees that work for you, are they from a similar background? Yeah, so they both know social media. They both know photography. And they're both really good with people. And how about their uh, college degrees? And I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. Oh, don't I've know. never asked. I have no idea. I know my, one of my guys is in school right now at a community college, yeah. um, but I don't know the other one. I had never asked him about school. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to bring it on a lower level, but for me, for what I do, it's really not recommended. But for other things, it definitely has its purpose. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you going like, to like, Well, we're developing a software right now where it can handle There's ways to get around that. Even though it's a factor, I'm not scared of it. I'll jump into it with, if I have 30 clients by myself, I'll deal with it and I'll hire somebody else. So we keep learning as we go and we find people who want to help. And then going to Orlando, you know, the whole idea behind that is to bring more exposure to, to be honest, social media is all perspective. It's all people seeing what you're doing and being like, wow, he's actually doing it. He's making it happen. Let alone people don't know that my credit cards are maxed out and I'm broke. <laughs> because for, like, I had a dream to buy a Lambo last year. I wanted to buy a Lambo. I had the money to do it. I wanted to. But I decided to hire two employees. And social media was like, why'd you do that? That sucks. I'm like, no, I'm building a vision for the next four or five years. And I don't need to flex on Instagram to so, show that I'm cool. I don't care about that. So that comes into play a lot when I look at the longevity of it, I look at how I'm going to expand, I look at how big social media is right now, and how much bigger it can be. No, so we focus on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. When it comes to YouTube, there's a lot more involved. I mean, you have to do filming, editing, scouting, you have to do so much for YouTube videos that I don't have the team to do that yet. I will, but not right now. And, and what came first? Did you first become famous yourself, or was it the marketing first, or a combination? It was me first, for sure. It was me sharing like what I did as a photographer and building my YouTube channel, and then I plugged that I'm a marketing agency too. So everyone that watched my videos, whether it was you know, a, a random business owner or a kid, you know, I have kids that I went to high school with, and now they have a big business, and now I do their social media because they saw my videos that I do that, and everyone needs help with social media. Well, when, I, when you look at Instagram, there's a lot of attention there. When you look at Twitter, it's kind of a different platform. Yeah. It's more like political and sports and TV like that. So it has to fit the right demographic. Uh, the clients that we work with, we kind of, when we get a new client, we'll evaluate their profile, figure out what their message is and how we can share it, and then how we can execute that. And if it's a company that is, let's say, political, then we use Twitter. If it's something that's like, uh, a software development company, maybe YouTube would be good to have an instructional video. And then you can pull content from the YouTube video put on Instagram and Facebook. So you can pull from all these sources depending on what the company is. The restaurant, they don't need a YouTube channel. They're already local demographic, they're killing it with that. Social media is just for fun, whatever. But when it comes down to a business who could use YouTube videos or benefit from Twitter, you have to figure out which one's gonna suit them the best. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, end up meeting Christian Guzman? I've been following that guy for about five years on YouTube and watching him go from like a warehouse gym to yeah. a million dollar you know, athlete brand and his YouTube following is getting 20 million views per following. He's selling out of products. I mean, it's a huge yeah. influence you had a connection with. How did you end up building that type of relationship uh, that has such a large following? I sent him a DM. Yeah. yeah, I sent him a DM. He, so this is what I do as a business owner. I fix problems. He posted a video where someone crashed into his Huracan, his Lambo, and it completely got totaled. And I DM'd him and I said, hey, I work at a dealership, I'll buy your car from you and I'll get you a new car. He called me right away and I sold him a car that day because I provided value to him. So that's what I do for a lot of my clients is I'll DM 100 Instagram accounts per day, like, hey, your social media needs some help. If three or four get back to me and say, hey, you know, what can you offer? Then I close them. So I think people are scared to like, utilize these functions on social media, where Facebook Messenger, Instagram, DM, whatever it could be, there's so much value behind that that people just underutilize it. Do you find yourself like, looking at the insights like certain times to post? And um, here and there. I mean, it does help, but Instagram's not chronological anymore. Right. So you have to look at it like, what's the most relative content you can post with the best hashtags? Not so much of the timing. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Connected with uh, Mike Bernabene, RPM yeah. at all? Uh -huh. I've done videos with him before. Uh, 
I did SEMA last year with him. Yeah, those guys are able to build a good audience through being humor and funny and crazy and doing stuff at Bradley's gym and all that goofy stuff where they're utilizing what they have. They're just documenting their life and people want to see that. You know, I'm filming these videos so when I'm 40, I can be like, dude, I'm happy I did that because I want to speak in front of 100 million, whatever it could be. So I'm just trying to, I'm trying to make people realize to, if you have an idea, go try something and, and learn from it, whether it's a YouTube video, Instagram, brand deals, whatever it could be. I think people are just limiting themselves to trying because they they're scared of what's going to happen. So what? You learn and have fun or whatever. You make a whole new life for yourself. So you're trying to figure out what the next step is for you. Sure. Well, sure. I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about it. Like I started the clothing line. I ran that for five years. I just closed it down last year because it didn't make me happy. It didn't make me what I want to do. I started a poster company where you could upload photos and print anything. I had a printer. I had a fulfillment center that did pretty well. It wasn't what I wanted to do. I closed that down. Um, I started like a protein line when I was working out a ton. I just didn't want to do that. I did it for a little bit. I learned how the protein supplement company worked. I did all the research and then I just canned it. Now, then I did car sales. I did sold cars for a long time. And then I did social media. I did photography. I did wholesale. I did financing. I did event marketing PR. I learned every aspect of it and I tried around 20 different things. I started 10 different businesses from 14 to 25. I did everything I could do for research. And then six, 18 months ago, my marketing company clicked. I'm doing this for the rest of my life. So it took me trying and trying and trying while publicly showing what I was doing, people saying you're spread too thin, why are you doing this, you're not smart, you should stick to one thing. I'm like, I'm gonna do 100 more things because I want to. And then one day, one thing makes sense. And that's what the, the marketing company did, it made sense. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Well, in closing, guys, let's give us Spencer a round of applause. And <laughs> Thank you, guys. We appreciate you coming to USD and uh, yeah. you know, giving us some great information. Um, what's like a, a key takeaway you think that if you walk out of here and uh, it might click for you? You said you want to find your niche. Um, what's a key takeaway to maybe just click on the, on the drive home? Uh, I think personally just if you have an idea, write it down. I have at least 11 whiteboards in my office and my house and they're covered in ideas and structures and clients, everything. Uh, visualize what you want. You know, I have stuff on my fridge, at my house. I have cars everywhere from... From, 19, from 18 years old to 26, I've set a goal of a different car every two years. And I've bought that car every two years. I bought an E30 I wanted, I bought a Subaru STI, I now have a supercharged M3. A goal of mine, I still don't believe I own that thing because I trip out about it when I sit in it. But when I, when I visualize what I want, it's easier to understand that you can do it. So if you, you wanna buy a house, you wanna buy a business, you wanna buy whatever it could be, print it out, hang it up, use whiteboards, look at it every day. And soon enough, it'll actually become reality. Yeah. Hey, a picture. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>